As we've seen, these power calculations are dependent upon the uh, separation in phase between the voltage and the current. And we call that angle theta, theta V minus theta I. We're not going to give that the term power factor angle. Power factor angle. And as we've seen, when the res in the resistor, theta V equals theta I, so that theta, the difference between the two, is zero. In an inductor, theta V is greater than theta I by 90 degrees, so the power factor angle is a positive 90. In a capacitor, just the opposite is true. The current leads the voltage in a capacitor, and theta V minus theta I is a minus 90 degrees. So theta ranges from plus 90 to zero to minus 90. The cosine of that term then becomes a value of, let's just write it like this, theta, theta ranges from a minus 90 in a capacitor to zero in a resistor on up to a positive 90 degrees in an inductor. The cosine of those terms, the cosine of minus 90 degrees is zero. The cosine of a positive 90 degrees is zero. The cosine of zero is one. So this cosine of theta becomes a number between the cosine of theta is a number between 0 and 1. In a resistor, when the voltage and current are lined up, we get the maximum amount of power delivered to the load. Anything less than, any time when the, voltage and fa the phase of the voltage and the phase of the current aren't equal, this cosine term is going to be something less than 1. And the power delivered to the load is going to be something less than the total V effective times I effective. Thus, this number becomes a multiplying factor, a value between 0 and 1, and that is referred to as the power factor. The cosine of theta is known as the power factor. It's a value between 0 and 1. The angle theta, which is theta v minus theta i, is the power factor angle. When specifying the size of a load, rather than specifying its impedance, frequently the load will be specified in terms of its power, like a 5 horsepower motor, or a 10 kilovolt 10 kVA um, transformer. Well, there's a problem with that. This power factor, the, the, the power specifies the magnitude of P, or this, this P value, but it doesn't give us any feel for what's going on with the angle. So in addition to specifying the power, the power factor will also frequently be specified. So we'll say it has a, it's a 5 horsepower motor with a 0.9 power factor. But there's one more level of ambiguity there. If all we know is the power factor, we don't know whether it's a power factor associated with a positive theta, which means theta V is greater than theta I, or that the current is lagging the voltage, as is the case in an inductor. We can't tell the difference. If all we know is 0.9, we can't tell whether this, uh, as I've already mentioned, the current is lagging the voltage, or if theta would be negative 90, where the current would be leading the voltage. So in specifying loads in terms of the power and their power factor, we will give it the horsepower rating, for example, the power factor, which is the cosine of the angle, and then they also specify whether it is lagging or leading. So to fully specify a 5 horsepower motor, we might say it's a 5 horsepower motor with a 0.9 lagging power factor. And that tells us everything we need to know. 5 horsepower is P. 0.9 is the cosine of theta, and the lagging tells us that the current is lagging the voltage, that then the theta is a positive angle. On the other hand, if we had a capacitive load that might have, say, uh, a 3,000 watt with a 0.85 leading power factor, that would tell us the P equal 3,000 watts, the cosine of theta equal 0.85, and it would also tell us that this leading would tell us that theta 
was negative associated with a capacitive load. To the extent that the phase of the voltage and current are not the same, we see then a degradation in power transfer. Tra power transfer. It becomes something of an inefficiency. And under some circumstances, it's enough of an inefficiency that we go to, to some length to correct that power factor. We'll talk about that later on. But let's just finish up our table here. In a resistor, just as a review, because the angle is zero, the cosine of theta is one, and the power in the resistor is V effective, I effective. The reactive power Q, which is dependent upon the sine of theta, is zero. In an inductor, you have a lagging power factor. The average power is zero. The reactive power is a positive V effective, I effective. Q is positive in an inductor. And finally, in a capacitor, again, average power is zero. Q, the reactive power, is equal to V effective, I effective, with a minus sign in front of it. Q is negative in a capacitor. Q is positive in an inductor.